Uh, let me present a joint work with Elena Petrova entitled A Billion Repetition Threshold Revisited. Uh, this is a piece of uh, combinatorics on words with some additions in string algorithms and random words. Let's recall uh, necessary notions. In a very broad sense, uh, repetition in word is just a pair of equal factors. Uh, uh, like in uh, these English words. And so uh, simplest repetitions are integral powers of a word. If you have a non-empty word u, you can write it several times to get a longer word. To write it two times, you get a square. Three times, you get a cube, and so on. Uh, so uh, a very important notion is the notion of avoidable class of repetitions. So some class of repetitions is called K avoidable. If over K letters, one can construct arbitrarily long words without uh, repetitions from this class. It's the same as saying uh, that there are infinitely many words uh, over this alphabet with no repetitions from this class. Or it's equivalent to say that there is an infinite word with no repetition. And uh, so this was the first uh, setting studied in uh, combinatorics on words. In 1906, uh, Thue uh, showed that squares are three avoidable and cubes are two avoidable. So over three letters, uh, you have infinitely many words which contain no squares, for example. And it's uh, easy to see that squares are not too avoidable. And so uh, this gives uh, us a complete characterization of um, avoidability of integral powers. OK, uh, along with usual repetitions, when you consider equal factors, there are a lot of uh, generalized weak repetitions when uh, one replaces equality with some relation which is symmetric and length preserving. It does not need to be an equivalence relation. So there are a lot of examples. For example, we can consider approximate equality up to some Hamming distance. You can uh, consider compatibility when you define uh, some relation on the alphabet uh, called compatibility and consider two words to be compatible if uh, they have compatible letters on uh, corresponding positions. Or you can consider like complementarity, like Watson Creek complementarity from bioinformatics. Or Adjugacy of uh, words also. Maybe the most um, well known uh, weak repetition, class of weak repetitions, is constituted by a billion repetitions, uh, which are based on the notion of a billion equivalent. Two words are a billion equivalent or a equivalent if they are anagrams of each other. So in Mathematical terms, we can say that they are equal as multisets of letters, like uh, these two pairs of English words. And we can define integral abelian powers in the same way as uh, integral powers. So integral square is just a word of the form u1, u2, where u1 and u2 are a equivalent. And the same for a cube. The same for uh, this a power. And we can ask the same questions uh, about the avoidability. And uh, the answer was 
um, partially by decking, who proved that a cubes are three avoidable and force a powers are two avoidable. And this is the best possible for cubes and for force powers. And this was uh, 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 completed by results by Kerenin, who proved that a squares are four avoidable. In fact, uh, the original question by Erdős about a billion squares was just, is there any finite alphabet which allows one to avoid a billion squares? And it appears that four letters are sufficient. OK, uh, let's move to a more uh, involved class of repetitions. Let's generalize um, powers to fractional powers. So for a rational number alpha, we say that uh, what V is an alpha power of a word U. If the ratio of their length is alpha, and V is a prefix of an infinite word, which um, is constructed from infinitely many copies of U. And uh, in the case if U is primitive, so it uh, cannot be written as a, it cannot be written as an integral power of a shorter word, then uh, we say that alpha is the exponent of this repetition. And uh, this is equivalent to the previous definition for alpha being an integer. It's easy to see. So it's indeed a generalization. And we say that uh, what is alpha free if it contains uh, no powers with exponent at least alpha, or we say that the word is alpha plus free if it contains no powers with exponent greater than alpha. And we say that uh, the exponent alpha or alpha plus is k avoidable if uh, there are infinitely many uh, words which are alpha free or correspondingly alpha plus. A repetition threshold is a function which uh, shows the border between uh, avoidable and unavoidable exponents over each alphabet. So it's just an infinite of the set of uh, avoidable exponent uh, for each alpha. And uh, there is a theorem which is quite uh, complicated, which says that uh, this function of t of k equals a k over k minus one for all k's, uh, except for two cases, three and four, where it uh, takes these two values. Uh, this form was conjectured by Dijon in 1972, and in fact, was proved in parts by many authors. Uh, was uh, finished in uh, 2009. Okay, and the feature of uh, this uh, theorem is uh, that uh, lower bounds are very easy. Uh, one minute to show that this is a lower bound. But uh, the constructions which prove that uh, k over k minus one with plus is k avoidable are quite complicated for all k's which are at least four. Okay, so uh, do you want something like for a billion repetitions? Yes, we do. So uh, in fact, our ultimate goal is to get a threshold theorem for a billion powers. But the first problem is how to define a fractional a billion power. Okay, uh, we want from this power that they should be 
compatible with alpha power. So an alpha power is an alpha A power. It's natural because equality is a special case of abelian equivalence. And uh, we also require that uh, our definition should be compared with integer abelian powers. Uh, so if we define alpha to be integer, our definition should give us precisely the definition of uh, integral abelian power. And uh, it would be a very nice bonus if uh, we will uh, have symmetry and the reversal. So the re reversal of um, alpha a power will be also an alpha a power as it is the case for alpha powers. And uh, these requirements uh, uh, leave us with uh, just one definition for the case when alpha is at most two. So the alpha a power is a word of uh, this form, u v u prime, such that u and u prime are a equivalent. And uh, this is uh, the ratio between the whole lens and the lens uh, without this uh, repeated part. And this is alpha. So if uh, V is empty, we uh, are getting uh, exactly a billion square. But for uh, alpha greater than two, there are several possibilities. Uh, all of them have drawbacks. You can have some integral power with a tail on the right with certain properties or with tail on the left or with two tails. The first two options are uh, not symmetric on the reversals and the third option uh, is not compatible with integral powers. So uh, we uh, chose the definition which is uh, compatible with uh, the definition for uh, small alpha. So for us, uh, alpha a power is a bottle of this form. When u1, etc., ud is a um, d a power, integral pa abelian power, and u prime is a equivalent to a prefix of uh, u1 of the same length. And of course, this uh, usual. Uh, requirement for the lens. And in this case, we obviously have also a dual alpha a power as the reversal of an alpha a power. So in this case, we will have this tail on the left. OK. Uh, so as above, we say that a word is uh, alpha a free if it contains no abelian powers with exponent at least alpha and alpha plus a free if a word contains a no abelian powers with exponent strictly greater than alpha. And the same uh, notion of uh, avoidability. And so we have uh, the counterpart of repetition threshold, which is abelian repetition threshold which is the infimum of all alpha, such that alpha is Ka avoidable. And an early result by Kassani and Kari uh, says that uh, the limit of A R T of K as K approaches infinity is one. So in fact, any abelian exponent uh, greater than one can be avoided over some big alphabet. But the bound uh, on the number of letters in this uh, alphabet is really huge. And I would say, uh, for example, that uh, for epsilon equal to one half, uh, they need in their construction more than 100 billions of letters. And uh, it's supposed that six letters is sufficient. And uh, later uh, was a piece of systematic study of uh, these problems in the paper by Samsonov and the second author. Uh, 
it contains definitions uh, of uh, repetition thresholds for several variations of uh, abelian fractional power. And for uh, our variation, uh, it contains uh, analytic lower bounds. K minus two over K minus three is not KA avoidable. And it was um, completed uh, by uh, some quite easy search result for smaller alphabets. And also it can contain some uh, upper bound of the growth rates of avoiding languages uh, when avoiding languages uh, were supposed to be. And maybe the main uh, contribution of this paper was the following conjecture. Uh, it uh, was counterpart of Jean's conjecture for repetition threshold and it its main part is uh, that uh, ART of K is K minus two over K minus three for all alphabets starting from five letters. And there are three special cases. And up to now, no case of this conjecture is proved. And it's not known whether the uh, threshold is indeed between these two points, uh, the infimum in the definition of abelian repetition threshold uh, cannot be reached. It's still possible that uh, it can be reached. We uh, don't know enough about uh, abelian repetition. And uh, we should say that uh, the construction used by Deking and Kirinen and uh, their modifications uh, by other authors uh, they avoid DA powers for what they were constructed, but they uh, do not avoid D minus epsilon A powers for any epsilon greater than zero. Okay, but uh, what's the problem? And uh, the problem is uh, that uh, abelian equivalence uh, differs from equality in two uh, very important directions. The first, that equality is inherited by prefixes and suffixes, but while uh, A equivalence is not such a uh, property, um, allows one uh, to uh, prove a word alpha free by uh, comparing just n square pairs of its factors. So basically for each factor, you need to compare it to one more factor. And if all comparisons are negative, then your word is alpha free. So in other terms, if you present alpha freeness as say a set of constraints uh, for constraint satisfaction problem, then you will have a uh, of n square of such constraints. And for a billion case, you will need a theta of n cube pairs to compare theta of n cube constraints. And this happens because uh, uh, a billion powers are often unexpected. So for example, I consider this uh, word without the last letter, it's uh, uh, three over two a billion free, it's easy to check. But you add just one letter and from a word which was three over two a three, you get an a billion square. And uh, this uh, means that uh, we should spend much more time uh, checking a word for a billion prints. And the second uh, difference is that two random words can cite quite rarely. So the probability of equality of two random words of uh, lens n is uh, k uh, in the power minus n. And uh, the probability of a equivalence is inverse polynomial, not inverse exponential. In practice, this means that if a word is not alpha-free, then 
it almost surely contains a quite short alpha power. But if the word is not alpha A free, it indeed may contain only very long alpha A powers. And this is not a sort of exceptional case. And uh, this means that to detect uh, alpha A freeness, why may need to study very long words. Okay, how to study them? Let's recall that a language is factorial if it is closed under taking factors of its words. And all letters given by avoidance properties are obviously factorial. For example, the languages of K are alpha A free words. And uh, every factorial language can be represented by its prefix tree. It's a rooted level tree. Nodes are just words from our language. And edges uh, reflect uh, uh, adding a letter on the right to a word. So let's consider an example. This is a fragment of the tree of uh, a billion quaternary language, which avoids uh, the exponent five of the tree. And uh, our alphabet is the alphabet of colors, red, green, blue, and orange. And uh, this fragment starts from the path red, green, blue. So now we are here. And uh, let's take a look at this part. In this point, we cannot add another blue edge because blue blue is a square and then a billion square but we can add any of uh, three other colors here but here we cannot add red color because red red we cannot add green color because we will have red green blue and red green which is a, a five over three power which is forbidden here so we can add only blue and orange and here, red, green, blue, green, we cannot add green, we cannot add blue to avoid green, blue, green, blue is a square. And we cannot add a red because uh, red, green, blue, and green, red uh, form an abelian 503 power. So the, here we can add only orange. And here there's no Okay, this is a prefix three. And uh, let's know that a language is infinite if and only if it contains words of arbitrarily big length. And uh, the idea is to construct long words as random walks in prefix three. Uh, so a random walk is a sort of Markov chain. We construct it by depth first search. We start from the root. And when we are in some node u, we try uh, appending a new unused letter to u. Uh, if we can it add it, what does it mean can add? It means that ua is uh, in our language. So we have a node ua in our prefix tree. Then, as naturally for depth first search, we go to uh, UA and continue our search. If it is not in L, then we uh, try another letter, uh, also chosen uniformly at random from remaining letters. And if the list of remaining letters in, is empty, this means that. Uh, we um, reach some dead end in the tree, so we uh, return uh, to the parent of uh, our current node. And during the search, we keep the track of the number of visited nodes and of the maximum depth we reached in the tree. So the maximum length of the world we have constructed. So we stop uh, if we uh, reach the required length of the walk, or if we reach the limit of the number of um, nodes we visit. 
And uh, so if you can repeat uh, this uh, multiple times, uh, we can do some science, some life statistics, relate conjectures, so on. So this is uh, already science, not uh, pure mathematics. Uh, so we have a key algorithmic problem within the search. The problem is uh, that uh, given a word in our language L, we should decide whether what UA belongs to L. And the typical solution for this problem is a data structure which stores necessary information about the word U, which allows fast updates from D of U to D of UA and back. So add the letter or delete the letter. So this structure is also endowed with an algorithm which answers the queries whether a word belongs to L. In this paper, we present several such algorithms. They are different and they have different performance. And uh, so the parameters we are interested in are, of course, uh, space used by I, our data structure, the update time, and the most important is the query time because uh, the algorithm does more queries than updates. And uh, since the number of queries is very big, uh, we are interested in average query time, not in worst case. And uh, so uh, for the case of small alpha, we have a greedy algorithm and a dictionary algorithm. Dictionary algorithm is uh, much faster but it has uh, these uh, guarantees only for the case when alpha is at most three over two, but it uh, works only with uh, sufficiently short words because of uh, this space requirement. And uh, this is uh, slower, but it can work with a long word as long as you can uh, process them in this time. And it appears that for the case of big alpha, there is a big asymmetry. Uh, it's not very surprising because uh, you have two dual definitions and it makes sense on which uh, side you add a letter. And if you add a letter on the right, as we do, then to detect a dual abelian powers is much easier. Okay. Uh, what are the typical uh, results to be obtained with uh, all this uh, machinery? So uh, the first type of random walks uh, looks as uh, in the first uh, graph. Uh, on the horizontal axis, you see the number of visited nodes, and this is the maximum depth. This is the current depth, sorry. And uh, for this language, which is supposed to be infinite, we have uh, such a nearly uh, straight line. And so uh, we uh, reached the uh, length of 60,000 uh, in uh, slightly over the 130,000 of uh, nodes. So we steadily go, hopefully, to the infinite. And in the second case, uh, we uh, got stuck. Uh, so you can see that uh, here it's uh, 10 millions of uh, nodes visited and uh, maximum length is below 2,500. And this is uh, in spite of uh, multiple use of uh, post backtrack sort of um, technique to uh, improve the performance of uh, random search, we suppose that this language is fine. And in fact, we have uh, this uh, infinite-like random works and finite-like random works. And uh, when we tried all the languages which are in the conjecture, which are supposed to be minimal infinite languages, uh, we see that the results are as follows. 
we can hardly pass the bound of 100 letters, the length of pass 100. Here we have a million nodes, two million nodes, and this is the, uh, our results about the maximum depth reached on average, on median, maximum. And this strongly suggests that uh, all these languages are finite. And uh, in fact, we managed to prove it. So, and to move repetition threshold for these uh, alphabets from this point. And in fact, we were also able to compute the maximum, actual maximum length of the border in all these languages. Uh, except for this, this is an approximation. And so, uh, the result was proved, uh, in fact, by exhaustive search optimized by some uh, tricks. And the main trick is as uh, follows. We started the search, this word, uh, and uh, try to construct all words which uh, avoid our exponent and also avoid a so-called k minus one permutation. So a word which contain a factor of length k minus one consisting of different letters. And we proved that language of all such words is finite. Then we started from a k minus one permutation of this sort and uh, prove a similar result that the language of all words starting from this, avoiding this exponent and avoiding k permutation is also fine. And then we start with k permutation uh, and prove that the language of all words avoiding this exponent is fine. And uh, these uh, three results and the observations that uh, you will see this in every second position, at least, of a word from the language L, this gives us in total uh, the finite of uh, the language L. Uh, but the search is quite big. Uh, the smallest is for eight letters, it's uh, about half a billion of words, and for 10 letters, it's more than 600 billions of words. And uh, that was uh, why uh, we finally we're able uh, to six, seven, eight, and nine letters to found uh, the maximum length of word. And for 10, we were uh, able only to find the maximum length in this uh, union, but not in all language elements. We also uh, study some other languages, uh, get some important findings. And uh, so classify some languages as probably finite or probably infinite, depending on the behavior of uh, the random. And uh, finally, we finish with this conjecture. The only case from the earlier conjecture is this one, which remains the same. And for all other cases, we shifted uh, this lower bound And so the general case uh, we suppose now is as follows. Instead of k minus two over k minus three, we have this. Uh, finally, uh, we should say that the details can be found in the paper and there's a lot of future work. And two main ideas uh, for future work is to prove an upper bound, say linear number of letters over k is enough to avoid one plus one over k. This will, this will be a, at least a reasonable upper bound. And for the lower bound, uh, we suppose that it may be possible uh, to prove analytically that this uh, exponent is not k avoidable for all. Thank you.